the missionaries came to Minnesota in the 1830s. But they did not have a lot of effect in, in converting the Indian people to, to Christianity until the Dakota conflict of 1862. Treaties had been made and they promised to pay and bring annuities for the loss of the land. But there was a civil war on paying annuities to a small tribe got very low priority. And then they had a bad uh, harvest in the fall of 1861. In 62, they had uh, their crops hadn't been harvested and the government uh, didn't distribute uh, the, the annuity goods, mainly the food, to the Indians. They were getting hungry. When they were starving and they had uh, one of the Presbyterian missionaries interpret. They asked Andrew Meyer what he thought about it, extending them credit. And he said, if they're hungry, why don't they eat grass? That sparked the uprising in Minnesota. On the morning of uh, about seven o'clock in the morning of August 18th, 1862, a lot of the young men were there at the Lower Sioux Agency where you had these four trading posts and they simply began shooting and uh, killing us in argument on whether there were 13 or about 20 white men were killed there at the bar agency barns and these kind of trading posts. The missionaries had left right kind of reluctantly from Pajuda uh, or Yellow Medicine and then the uh, Riggs Mission and uh, fled on August uh, 18th or 19th with under John Other Day back toward, uh, <coughs> say, Hutchinson, Minnesota, places like that down the river. On the morning of uh, the 23rd of September, at Wood Lake, Colonel Henry H. Simley had a small army there, about 2,000 men. They defeated the Dakotas completely, and that ended the major action of that war. And they rounded up all the Indians indiscriminately. Didn't make any difference of women, children, they brought them all. Brought them to two prison compounds. And when they were incarcerated, uh, the men were incarcerated at Mankato, and the women were at Fort Snelling. And at that time, many of them were baptized into Christianity and started learning about uh, Christianity. And a commission was sent to conduct trials. They were going to hang over 300 men. Missionaries had been in the prison compound ministering to the prisoners. And they appealed to President Lincoln. He reviewed the records and the charges and commuted the sentence of all but 39. Then at the last possible moment, one more got reprieved. On December 26, 1862, 38 were led out of the prison compounds and they were being led to the gallows. The women began wailing and weeping one of the men, in a loud voice, said, Mitakwepi Namakupo, hear me, my people. Today is not a day of defeat. It is indeed a victory. For we have made our peace with our Creator, and now go to be with Him forever. So remember this day to tell our children, so they can tell their children, that we are honorable men who die for a noble cause. Do not mourn for us. Rejoice with us. It's a good day to die. The men were moved to Davenport, Iowa, and the women were moved to Crow Creek in South Dakota. And the missionaries followed them there and continued to, to work with them. During that period, many of the Dakota people, because of their earlier con conversion to Christianity in Minnesota, they were then the leaders within the prisons. Um, even when the, when the missionaries weren't there, they continued to have services every day. When the 
Dakota people were released in 1866 to go to the Santee Reservation in Santee, Nebraska. Uh, the men came from Davenport and the women came from Crow Creek and their families were reunited. At that time they formed a church in Santee called the Pilgrim Church and uh, it was under uh, John P. Williamson at that time. <laughs>